I think we can all agree that we had a great time with this cap. As all good things, I think we should hold it in honorable memory and focus on something new. And that's also the topic of the day because Capacitor was just released. And if you happen to be like in the Ionic universe, you might have heard about Capacitor. You might have, 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 might have, have, you might have some questions about Cordova versus Capacitor and today's the day we're gonna answer them. To be honest, I actually haven't worked a lot with Capacitor so far. Um, I didn't join like the beta stuff and I just wanted to play it a bit more safe because I don't really... I'm too old for the betas, you know. Now I've been in the Ionic 4 beta and a lot of versions and it's a lot of confusion if you're creating code around it on beta versions that constantly change. So this time I just wanted to play it safe and wait for the final version, which happened to be released the, um, like last week or so. And therefore everything that I will tell you in this video is based on the things I have read about Cordova uh, and Capacitor over the last time, my very limited own usage and also the experience that I just had by going through a few of the documents and trying out things that I will show you in a sec. But before we actually get into the details, let's just quickly talk about it. Capacitor for everyone who uh, has no idea what this is about is basically Cordova 2.0, okay? Cordova has um, a lot of issues, it's a great project, it's really um, a project that will still exist for a very long time I guess and Ionic is also supporting Cordova still in the future so don't fear anything uh, dramatical in terms of that. But Cordova has some issues and with Capacitor Ionic tries to improve some of the flaws that Cordova has and also give you as the developer a unified API that you can use on both iOS and Android but also everywhere the web runs. Excellent. Because you know Ionic is betting heavily on the web. Ionic is very confident that the web will basically win. That means Capacitor plugins also work in progressive web apps as we've seen um, progressive web apps a few weeks ago. And also in Electron apps because they are basically also just your packaged web application and also just inside your browser. At the same time there are also a lot more like structural changes when using Capacitor but I will talk about that later, let's just give it a real try and look how it feels and how it works. I honestly don't know where to start this journey with you, so I think the best thing is to just start on the same page where I started like an hour ago. The native bridge for cross-platform web applications is important to point out that also with my other videos in this vlog format I try to not only focus on Ionic developers. So. Basically everyone are working with web components or building websites and trying to get cross-platform stuff working can use Capacitor. So it is not something that we can only use with Ionic, just like Cordova that we can use in other projects as well. There are a lot of cool things, um, native access to SDKs in a pretty much easy way, of course, cross-platform, easily used with Ionic, open source, extensible and web native. Okay, so there we go, get started. What I did is um, something that you can also see in the last video I did just this week um, on using Capacitor. And you can actually use Capacitor in two ways. Either you can add it to an existing app or you can also actually... Where is it? It's not in here. Um, okay, here we go. Use it immediately with the Ionic CLI. So that's very handy. Um, the project is integrated. So Capacitor is a bit different in terms of the project management because the iOS and the Android native project should be checked into your source control. They're an important part. So with Cordova you have like a config XML that will automatically configure and build the native project and you don't really touch them. With Capacitor you really get access to them, you can easily open them through the Capacitor CLI and they're uh, really an important part of the whole idea behind Capacitor. So what I did is I created a project and I just tried out a few things and I just want to show you what I did. 
So one thing that's working pretty well is uh, using Capacitor core plugins that work out of the box. So there are not too many plugins out of the box, just a few essential APIs. And once you start your project or you add Capacitor to your project, you can use them. And they are imported just like this, import plugins from Capacitor and then extract the um, plugin that you want to use in this case, for example, the geolocation. So no installation of additional Cordova or Ionic native packages so far. And then in your code, just like you're used to, you can use those plugins and do whatever you want with them. And of course, I have to show you or prove that it's working. So let's start my tracking. Um, I don't know where my, yes, there we go. Um, actually, I got a few other locations from some testing before. So let's stop this and let's start it again. And there we see this is where I live. And you see, we're right now on the browser and I can also bring in, I can also bring in the iOS simulator, which is doing basically the same only with San Jose and uh, no San Francisco, of course and messing up a bit the um, watch command in here, but no problem. So you see Capacitor working on web and native projects without any plugin. This was just the first step and I wanted to take things a bit further. So what interests me uh, especially was how Capacitor looks and I wanna give you a little idea how the inside works. So if you um, inspect your project, um, you will find an iOS and Android project, which are basically a native project. So I will do an example with the iOS project. Here we are right inside Xcode, um, the IDE for native iOS developers. And we can see that we got a pod project, which is basically the NPM of iOS developers. So Cocoa pods are plugins that we can install. And that's where Capacitor is based on. And if you go down the road, you can find the native capacitor plugins that are already bundled in the beginning. Uh, so somewhere should be like the camera from the plugins. There we go. So this would be the, I will always remember the command to hide the console because it is command shift Y on a Mac. And it's always, why is there an error? So it's easily, something you can easily remember. So on the Mac, command shift Y. Why is there an error? All right, so this is the implementation and basically the same like Cordova, right? With Cordova, you also got native code for iOS and Android that is bundled into your application. Um, it works in the background, but with Capacitor, we don't have to wait for the platform ready. So there's no Cordova magic going on. We can immediately go into those plugins. So we got the pod plugins and now I wanted to take it another step further, which is developing my own plugin. And this works pretty great given the uh, capacitor CLI to generate a new plugin. So that's what I did. Um, this brings up a little dialogue to insert some information, nothing really fancy. And now I should somewhere find my project. So here is the motherfucking T. The project that was generated using the capacitor CLI plugin. Come on, please. It's not that hard. So this is the basic plugin overview. Of course, you got an Android folder, an iOS folder. We got the web folder so we can define all the uh, functions in this plugin. Um, I just changed like one line. What I wanted to do is um, return something. And in the beginning, you already got all this structure, so I didn't do anything in here. The only thing I did was changing this echo function, which is the like the demo or testing functionality in the plugin to return not only what we added to it, um, but also a special key to join the Ionic Academy, which is, if you happen to be new, my place to help you with Ionic and of course in the future as well Capacitor. So I went down to the web file, I changed the web, I changed the Java code for Android and I also changed the iOS code inside the Swift file. 
So a little disclaimer, of course you need to know about iOS, Android, native development and native SDKs to write your own plugins. Still, they are a lot more convenient to write, I would say. So I created a Cordova plugin in the past and that was really a pain. And this basic structure for a plugin worked pretty flawless out of the box. So what I did then was I built it, hit npm publish and the outcome is hopefully in my packages, so ignore all the rest. They're like, I don't know, nobody's using them. Here we go, Simon Native Epic plugin. With that plugin, I went to my own application and I simply installed it right with NPM. This was really done like in 10 minutes. So once I got my Simon Native plugin installed, I was able to import the Simon plugin from Simon Native and then use the Simon plugin to echo whatever and then use the special field that we added and now watch out for this. There we go, join the Ionic Academy. And also, if you don't trust me, here we are on the native device. Oh, and one cool thing, I'm just at this moment running a live reload so I could now easily change uh, whatever in here. So let's say, I don't want to alert this, but YouTube go 100K. I save this and I wait a few seconds um, to rebuild the project and then our native project will automatically reflect the changes. So that's not really something new for Capacitor, but with Cordova I had problems in the past and this time it really worked great. To wrap this video up, um, one last thing. So, nope, that's not what I wanted to show you. Um, this is about Cordova. So you might now fear that you cannot use Cordova in the past and you're bound to Capacitor if you switch. Stay wait, 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 calm down! Well, that is not true. You can simply npm install your Cordova plugins. And of course, I tried this out for you. So I picked a random plugin was um, the unique, unique device ID plugin um, and I installed it so I can prove, no, just unique device. There we go. I installed the unite, unique device ID um, package for Cordova and also the Ionic native package. And then I used it as advertised or as you've always used it from uh, Ionic Native NGX. And then I just uh, alert the UUID of the package. And guess what is happening if I tricked? It comes out with the unique, unique what is wrong with this word? Uh, device ID. Mm -hmm. And also, if I now go ahead and check out the native project, um, I would see that in the development pods there's Capacitor, Capacitor Cordova, um, Cordova plugins, uh, and there we go with the unique, unique device ID. Um, I don't know why I have some problems with that one. Capacitor is also bundling Cordova plugins into this native project. Um, whenever you make any changes, either have the reload up and running or simply uh, run npx capacitor sync your platform and then capacitor will check your project. It will copy all the iOS assets. Um, then it will find a Cordova plugin. It will find a capacitor plugin, which is the one I developed and then update the dependencies in the project and boom, everything is ready again. So really this is now the project ready and the live reload would work because with Capacitor, we don't have to rebuild the project, but let's talk about this in a different setting as a conclusion. Capacitor works a bit different, but as you've seen, it works pretty good. You can easily use the out of the box plugins, which are just a few essential plugins. Um, there are community plugins, which are actually not so many yet, but you can also still use all the Cordova plugins pretty easily. The only big change is about the project management of the native project. So as I said, um, Capacitor uses a different approach. Um, you gotta work a bit more with the real native project, but I think this is a great way because the config XML and the abstraction layer was sometimes um, really scary and didn't work that well. 
And now, given the fact that you're basically in full charge of the native project, you can do all the changes, um, add the permissions and all of this and nothing will be gone once your fellow developer is working on the code. So today, this was just really a super quick introduction to Capacitor. If you want to see more about it, perhaps in the Tuesday uh, video, of course, I'm happy to share more about Capacitor. As I said, I'm still also a beginner with it. I just tried out a few things and I was happy that it really worked as advertised. So I would love to hear your opinions about Capacitor, um, either as an Ionic developer or as a developer in general for the web, maybe. So my first or second impression is that it really works great. I think this is really uh, what we will use in the future in Ionic project. I enjoyed the way of creating the plugin, although I'm not really into native uh, SDKs anymore, but I still think it is a very easy way to get started and a lot of developers will share their plugins once Capacitor becomes a bigger thing in the community. Therefore, the conclusion for this week is super simple. Go out, install Capacitor, Build a simple project, um, maybe create a little plugin as well, and then enjoy it on all of the platforms, including the live reload. Great thing. I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to give the thumbs up, the like, the subscribe, everything. Uh, at this point, we are, I think, already behind 20,000 subscribers. So, and of course, I am super excited for everything that is still to come. So enjoy your week as always. Happy coding, Simon. <laughs>